I, I liked the dad. Yes. You know, what's his name again? The one who... I'm so... What? I'm the one making me purr. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today we'll be making sense of life through Trial of the Chicago oh, wait. 7. I should go to the middle. Did you go to the left a little bit? No, I can't. What's the matter? No, I have this in the middle, so if we're... In the... <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. You will do what you want to do. <laughs> Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Today, we'll be making sense of life through the trial of the Chicago 7. Good film. Yeah. Fine film. Fine film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, it follows the historical events of the Chicago riots during the Vietnam War in protest of the Vietnam War, where hundreds of protesters went to protest the Democratic National Convention. And they got met with police lots of police and police violence and police brutality and then the trial afterwards is trying to figure out who started it whether it was the police or the protesters and that's what the story revolves around the yeah the main defendants that are representing the the whole protest group yeah well they are put together yeah uh they're it, it's orchestrated strategically yeah so it's a political trial, as yeah. Abby says. Yeah. yeah. Even though everyone says, there is no such thing as political trial. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah? Are you sure about that? Yeah. yeah. It's not to say that these people that are on trial are actually working together, yeah. necessarily. They just, I suppose, have the same vision of America, which mm -hmm. is stop the wars. Yeah. Um, but they're not necessarily in, this, in the same group or organization. Yeah. But then they were all, you know, put on trial yeah. as though they were. I'm tired. Oh my god! <laughs> you called this meeting. At it's some just... point, I want to make a, a comp, like a compilation of all the times you've said I'm tired on yeah. our videos. <laughs> yeah, because I always am. Yeah. Like my job is it's quite. Yeah, it's it's takes up uh, a mm. lot of energy. Well, maybe I wouldn't say grueling. Would you say grueling? Not grueling. I wouldn't say grueling. No, I like it. So yeah. I would never never say associate grueling. Associate it with anything that's grueling, but yeah. it's more just cumbersome. <laughs> cumbersome yeah. yeah i liked how uh the idea of being in a group or well not necessarily being in a group but having the same kind of um outcome in mind yeah. and not actually having agreeing on or believing in the same strategy to obtain that outcome mm -hmm. especially when you have i guess i would say left wing that's they the the defendants were all generally left wing mm -hmm. right and so you have in in your mind, okay, well, if we're both left wing um, leaning, that means we have we look at we have the same kind of worldview. And I think that mo this movie was great for me because it actually portrayed the fact that that is not the case. Mm. You have Abby who is super eclectic and yeah. just like groovy. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have Tom Hayden who is left wing but mm -hmm. is incredibly yeah. conservative. Well, well and he, and, he, <laughs> and he's uh, Hayden. I think is a good example of. And I, I'm guilty of it too, right? When people like to think of the counterculture of the 60s, people think, oh, you know, it was the majority of people were against the war and the majority of people were pot smoking hippies and all that. And it's like, they were still a small minority. Like that's, that's really the thing is that, you know, you, there's only ever so big a portion of the population that is of one demographic or one particular movement. Yeah. Right? Um, but in all the footage you see of historical records of the 60s, the Summer of Love, it just seems like, wow, everyone in America just grew their hair out, yeah. you know, and, and was just like wearing tie-dye and just listening to trippy music. But it, it's still a, a small portion. There were still a lot of, of people that... that you know, were suited up and they and they didn't like that movement at all or that cult yeah. that subculture. And then there were even exactly um, considered left wing people, but were still also very about maybe evolving but maintaining or working within the system. It's it's I love that you bring that up because I remember Tom Hayden was so upset with Abby and so irritated with his strategies because he was like, well, you know, it, people uh, when history remembers this time, they're going to remember you. You know, they're going to remember us as right. just like these pot smoking, you know, hippies mm -hmm. instead of looking at us as serious people who yeah. actually want to make a change. Yeah. That's what they're going to look back at. And it's true. Like yeah. when you, you know, we do yeah. look back at that time, that is a lot of what we see. Yeah. I mean, generally, we assume that if you are left leaning, you are disruptive and mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're trying to do all these things, which is yeah. definitely not the case because there's so many facets of yeah every single side yeah um so that's the thing that i really like about that that movie yeah. and um 
Yeah. I don't believe that we're on spectrums in this case. I'm very much about the spectrum for a lot of things when it comes to mental health and some such, but I've converted to the kaleidoscope way of looking at pol of political leanings. That makes yeah. more sense to me because anytime I tried to figure out myself or other people I knew on the spectrum, a uh, political spectrum, never quite fit because then you'd find out like, okay, they're here, but then they'd have something that feels like it would pull them all the way to their side. So you're like, well, that's because it, you know, it just doesn't work for me that way. People are just a constant mix and it's always mixing and falling into each other and, you know, combining yeah. into more trippy combinations of light and yeah and uh filament and beauty <laughs> so that's the thing everyone is a bit of a of a, of a mix there were and then tom hayden who seems the most um let's work within the confines of that we find ourselves in he was the one that arguably kind of started the riot yeah. you know and uh, i can relate with abby's uh feelings throughout the trial where he is the most clearly um disrespecting to the judge like he can see right away that the judge is incompetent and yeah. isn't doing so his job so he's not even making being. an effort yeah. yeah he's like well you clearly aren't doing you don't know what you're doing so why should i take this seriously at all yeah you know he's really just and the he's most already honest. made his decision yeah. that's the thing i yeah. think it's just one of those things where you've already judged me yeah uh i know i'm going to jail no matter what yeah. so why am i even going to try yeah. like this is just a waste of time just yeah. put me in jail it's yeah. just yeah it's for the optics really this yeah. whole trial yeah yeah, because it's interesting, Hayden, as, as much as the judge continues to be biased, continues to um, act illegally, really, mm -hmm. he is so committed mm -hmm. to the, the structures of governance mm -hmm. within the courtroom and um, in America. Yeah. And so he's, he's it, it, that was really interesting to me because I think a lot, it just, it, that, that's, that difference between Abby and um, and Hayden of, yeah, we have rules, we have laws, but hey, Abby does not respect the rules or the laws because they're just there to basically have people believe that they are living in, they have security. Mm -hmm. They, you know, laws are like, kind of like God, you know, people who believe mm -hmm. in God have that sense of security that I'm not alone. Yeah. There is safety yeah. and there's a system here and there's order. Yeah. Um, and so Abby, in his mind, is like, no, these are just there to make us believe this, mm -hmm. but that's not the reality. And that is why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, if these laws actually work, I wouldn't yeah. be on trial. Yeah. Hayden, on the other hand, no, despite the trial commits, mm -hmm. he just doesn't, he, he doesn't want to yeah. see any different. And yeah. that there are people like that too. It is obviously comforting yeah. to, a, to he, know that you have that true, kind of security. He's a true believer in, in state governance. And, yeah. you know, maybe it's better for your mental health to have that view because he went on, Hayden went on to uh, be in, I think, work as a senator or something in the yeah, legislature for, for like was, one, yeah. like five or six terms or something. Mm -hmm. So he's popular and maybe he did some, some helpful stuff in, in, in his career working in, in the system. And then Abby ended up killing himself. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, and maybe, uh, it's, our, our, who knows, maybe Hayden in the long run did actually make more change in terms of at least within, you know, within, uh, yeah. the government. Yeah. There is that say. question of, you know, to go against the system or not to go against, to, or not to, or to, to um, assimilate to it, right? Mm. Because it's kind of like someone, ta I don't know who said this, but something like to change the system, you have to become part of it first mm. if you want to change it. Like you, it's kind of like, you know. Ex accept the world for how it is, then you can and change yourself. Or was it if you can't change the world, then change the way you react to the world kind of thing? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. One th uh, thing that I also found interesting about this movie was that the, you know, like the I the the judge, right? The judge got there because he. Well, you would if you're in that kind of position. We're obviously gonna assume that you got there because you have all of these accolades that entitle you to that position. Mm -hmm. And so then you know how the world is set up, right? Like there's that whole thing where looking at someone as an authority and respecting uh, uh, the authority for the fact that they worked so hard to have gotten to that position, presumably. Mm -hmm. However, because of how the judge is, right, he may have honestly gone to school, he may have done well, he may have gone through, you know, what he has to go through to become a judge and being placed in that position fairly. Hmm. However, it doesn't justify what he what he does just hmm. because he's a judge and just because he may have had a background that entitles him to that position. Hmm. It didn't make it, it didn't validate the behavior, hmm. his behavior, because he would be 
he's, he always went on about, you know, you have to respect me. This is my court, mm-hmm. you know, and the, the fact of obviously he comes in, he leaves all, everybody has to rise. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I definitely aired more on, um, uh, Abby's side here because then him and the other guy ended up saying like, let's not stand, let's not mm-hmm. rise when it's time to rise. But then Hayden, of course, being, you know, a stickler for the system, um, he does rise later. He says, Oh, that was just like force of habit which again is like you are so much part of the system that it's a force of habit, right? Yeah. But yeah, for me, like someone like that, it's it's just kind of, I don't believe that just because you're in a, in a position of power, you um, deserve my respect. Mm-hmm. You have you are just like everyone else because just like, you know, you're a judge. Imagine things like going to like a cop. A cop is someone who's mm-hmm. in a position of power. A security guard is someone in a position mm-hmm. of power. All of these people, it just manifests differently. Your parent is someone is in a position of, of power, but just because they are that, uh, and you, they are in that position of power because of um, what the system decides, mm-hmm. you know, deserves um, accolades or respect. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean, justify it. Right? Yeah, like it, it doesn't justify any kind of behavior, or it's kind of like your, it's a paper, right? You are. You became this because of uh, because of certain structures that you managed to you know like to, to uh, meet the demands of. But for me, that's not enough. There's much more to a person than just their position. So you're not going to be absolved just because you're a judge. Yeah. To me, actually, it's almost more the opposite of just getting respect once you get to a certain uh, job title level or something like that. Because to me, if you get to level of judge. How then are you able to act so unjudge like? Yeah. And not at one point be like, oh Whoa. my god, I'm a judge. I am <laughs> basically calling the shots on 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 this whole thing affecting so many people, you know? Like that should be something that reminds you more to act your title or act appropriately or or to reflect on these things, on how your how your behavior is towards other people. I think it's it has less to do with the position, but to, with the yeah. person. Yeah. That that judge, the judge Judge Hoffman, is an insecure man mm-hmm. who is you know kind of like he's he's that guy who buys a super loud, um, expensive, fast car, right? Because he's compensating for something, mm-hmm. so he gets to compensate for whatever he um, insecurities mm-hmm. he has with this position. Just like again, back to the security guard, right? Like comparatively, these two people are just such a far stretch from like they're from each other, right? Mm-hmm. So starkly different. But you do get security guards who use that little mm-hmm. smidge, yeah. <laughs> that little bit of yeah. um, power that they are given when they are at work, mm-hmm. you know, to be extremely unkind mm-hmm. and to, you know, to be menacing. Yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean you know, it has nothing to do with the position itself. Mm-hmm. It just has more, it has to do with the person because at the same time, in the same vein, you've met a great, a judge who is absolutely fair. Mm-hmm. You've in the same vein met a cop that is absolutely fair mm-hmm. or a uh, security guard that's absolutely fair or whoever in a position of power yeah. that is absolutely fair. Yeah. So I don't think it has anything to do with the position per se. Yeah. I think it depends on the person. Yeah. I, I think sometimes, you know, it's easier. Like yeah. there are people who are operating on that level in the mm-hmm. world of, um, just give me the rules. Yeah. I just want the rules. I know I need to know yeah. how to get there, but from point A to point B, yeah. I don't need anything else. And they just yeah. follow that and they don't yeah. understand or interact with anything outside yeah. of that. And that's yeah. a shame. Yeah. Um, Which, and so I think that's basically what it is. And yeah. that's, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Okay. That's a good way to lead into where, uh, another thing, um, is that it, it, um, power is not self-legitimating because yeah. laws are man-made, meaning that at some point they had to come into existence, you know, yeah. probably replacing old law, which means that you need to constantly be questioning, does this still make sense? Do we still need this? Or should we clean it out with a spring cleaning? Yeah. Do we still need that thing that's been in the garage forever? Or maybe we don't actually use it anymore. Maybe we can kind of get a new one or just, repl- you know, just get rid of it altogether, yeah. you know? And, but if you don't believe, I think if you, if you feel like um, you must respect a certain authority no matter what, then that makes it a lot tougher to kind of really look at is this still needed you know yeah. and um and it's and that's the thing that that institutions especially struggle with all over the world the catholic church i think we touched on it in a, in a previous video the two yeah. popes where it's tough to then if, if you're not constantly thinking about does this actually seem relevant still you know if, if you're not constantly doing it, you're just like well this is how it's always been and we got to stick to it because that gives some consistency some constancy yeah. in life which 
I believe there really isn't much. The only, the only constant in life is change. Permanency is the only permanent, or impermanency is the only, you know, constant. So, yeah. um, but it's tough. It's tough to live that way. And I think some people, their mindset does favor more. Just I have to live. There's some stability, yeah. some constant thing that I can guide me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked the dad. Yes. You know what's his name again? The one who. I'm sorry. What? I'm the one making the prayer. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I like that the the dad um yeah. he involves his kids and his child and his son and is very involved. I mean, mm-hmm. he's very honest about what he's doing, yeah. which he's not coddling the kid. Oh no, innocence! Oh, we can't. Yeah. Um. Because yeah, at the end of the day, people kids grow up, and it's better to have them be prepared for what's to come. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he does a really good job of you know explaining to him what's going on in a very in a way that is subtle but like at the same time very informative yeah so i like that and the kid ends up going to um going to court with the mom yeah. and is super proud of his dad mm-hmm. that was also really nice to see yeah yeah, yeah and you and uh i like that relationship yeah in the movie. yeah it's nice to see kid parent relationships like that that seem very communicative with each other it's unfortunate that we even have that concept of he's treating like a, a, yeah. a kid like an adult like, yeah what does that even mean yeah um, they really just mean like they're just like kinda, a person like a person you, you yeah. know instead of like this they're they're, they're giving explain they're like oh you don't know where i'm going this is where i'm going this is why i'm <laughs> yeah. going really just <laughs> basic stuff really exactly yeah. i feel like sometimes we think that oh no this is way beyond the realm yeah. realm of a, a child's understanding but yeah. Mm. Kids are very um, mm. perceptive, yeah. and also even if they haven't experienced something, you can explain it to them. Yeah. I mean, I'm, we've met people who are like you know '90s, right? And they can't. Yeah. You can't even explain anything to them. They yeah. are like kids, literally, yeah. in the way that we think kids yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then you've met like kids who you can actually have a conversation yeah. with and explain stuff to them, and they're exactly. kind of communicating with exactly. you. So I do like that. I liked uh, I like that relationship a lot. You know, the dad just like treating their kid yeah. like a person. Yep. You know. <laughs> hmm. Is there anything else? Maybe that's it. Maybe that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. But you know, that was some stuff that uh, that we uh, thought about regarding the trial of the Chicago Seven. What'd you guys think? Yeah. Huh? You seen it? Did you uh, pick up on those things or other things? Let us know down below. And if you hadn't seen it, let us know down below. If you hadn't seen it, maybe you're curious. You know, maybe we've uh, sparked an interest for you. Right. Either way. Say goodbye now. Say goodbye now. Yeah. Okay. Till next time, that's a wrap.